our farming started originally. It was my grandfather, my father and my uncle. Each one of them had a farm and we worked it and still am working it. Our biggest commodity is uh, topsoil. It's not soybeans, it's not the corn, it's not wheat. If we haven't got any topsoil, we haven't got a farm. Oh, we've been doing cover crops probably four or five years. But in the same token too, we always grow 200, 250 acres of wheat. So actually our wheat is also really a cover crop. I don't think I'd ever go back to not having a cover crop. One of the biggest things that you'll see when you go through Jim's fields is cover crop. That is one of the keys to keeping soil in the ground. In March or February, you know, we have snow runoff and if those fields are bare, that's when we have a lot of the, the turbid runoff into the lake. So by putting those cover crops on, you know, late fall, it makes a huge difference. It's been awesome to see growing up just where we've come, even since I was a little kid. We've always been conservation oriented. For us, it's our whole life. So if we aren't getting nutrients where we need them to go, then it's hurting us and hurting the environment around it. And we've evolved, I mean, from fall plowing to no-till to minimum till, we're evolving. In the fields, we put grass waterways in, and the topsoil stays there and just runs down the grass. We got, we got contour strips up here on the hill, and we have grass waterways, we have buffers along the roads here. And lately, say you have a field that's along a gully or a woods, what we've done is uh, seeded them down and just let them go over conservation and we treat streams just like we do the lake, you know, because the streams go into the lake. Jim was one of the founding fathers of the Skinny Out Lake Watershed Aid Program. He told us it was a, a volunteer program, that the city was going to spend some money in to best manage practice on farms. The main focus of our watershed protection program is, is keeping our filtration avoidance. With, with agriculture being over 50% of the land base in the watershed, the farmers are, are, a, are a big player in water quality in the environment. For the city of Syracuse, cost is the main advantage of not filtering our water. In today's cost, it would probably be close to $150 million. And then on top of that, there'd be operating costs. And because we don't filter, we can devote those resources more for watershed protection. And he says, it's free and you get to set the policies, you farmers get to set the policies that you can live with. And there was, there was a lot of skeptics when we first started, but we made it. We're continually reporting back to Mark Berger's team on what we see in the field, and then they start working with farmers to come up with remediation. The watershed partnership with Jim on this farm has been immeasurable. Our staff has developed a whole farm plan that documents the stewardship that the farm is doing and it also identified areas where additional conservation practices could be added and really now I think it's safe to say the farm is in a maintenance phase. So Jim and I go back over 30 years. One of the main things that the city does is we go around and we, we look at farm fields during runoff events. Why your fields are so important to us is because they are really close to our intakes. The Greenfields have put in many, many conservation practices. They would bring other farmers to their farm to see these practices and to show the farmers, hey, I can do it. It didn't impact our bottom line and that they were good for water quality and good for the environment. When we started this program, we knew we had to have all the farmer buy it. You know, guys like Jim really had to promote this to all their fellow farmers, that this was a good thing and there was going to be some give and take from the farmers, from the city, but we needed their cooperation or else this would have never happened. I know seven days a week, 24 hours a day, I can pick that phone up and Jim will be on the other end saying, how can I help you, buddy? We feel in the watershed program that it's the farmer to farmer connection it means the most in terms of bringing new farmers into the watershed program. And that's what Jim has been great at bringing to the table for us. That's, that's true leadership. For me, it's not that difficult. They picked the right people to employ this ag, this, this ag program. And myself personally, I couldn't ask for any better.
I think we're putting a pressure on ourselves, which is my own personal feeling, to stay farming and to stay farming right. We got a fourth generation come on and wants to do it, so that's what I'm working for. I felt ecstatic when Jim and the Greenfield Family Farm won the Leopold Conservation Award. To know that the Greenfield Farm got recognized for all the great work that they've done over the last 50 years, it made my year. It's, it's pretty impressive, you know, the, the legacy of the Greenfield Farm here. I was really excited when I found out we'd won and for the community to realize that as far as relationships and them seeing that we're doing all we can, I think that's huge. And I don't know if I'm the best in the state, but it makes you feel good that you're pretty darn close. People need to know what a great job they're doing at protecting water quality in the environment here in the Skinny Atlas and Alaska Lake watersheds. Thank you.